Just as a motorist carries his maps, so every ship has its charts. And every ship's radio operator receives, from time to time, emergency notices which bring those charts bang up to date and avoid any possible danger from new hazards that may have appeared. All over the world, ships today can navigate with safety just because charts are accurate. Leading the world in chart making is the British Navy, which publishes more than 3,500 charts. They cover the seven seas and are constantly corrected. Into one of the world's most beautiful harbours, the harbour of Monte Carlo, sails HMS Vidal, largest ship of Britain's surveying fleet, just returning from nine months in the West Indies. Here, in the Principality of Monaco, the nautical surveyors of the world meet every five years to talk about the world's charting problems. At this conference, with Britain's hydrographer, Rear Admiral Edmund Irving, as host, Vidal went out on a short voyage to demonstrate new British surveying equipment. Nautical surveyors, both naval and civilian, of 41 nations were Vidal's guests. Britain's 12 survey vessels are equipped with every kind of modern apparatus. The helicopter is mainly used for ferrying surveyors when they have to work ashore. How did this business of mapping the oceans begin? Ship's captains made the first charts, like this one of 1747, drawn on a sheepskin. And this chart of Newfoundland, made by famous explorer Captain Cook 200 years ago. Since then, naval surveyors have made hundreds of new surveys, many of them based on the original charts. Here, Britain's assistant hydrographer, Captain Stephen Ritchie, inspects a modern survey of Harwich Harbour. A new survey often reveals changes in the shape of the seabed, which means that each chart in stock has to be corrected by hand before it's issued. The men who make maps of the sea are trained by the captain of the survey vessel in which they're serving. They are assisted by specialist ratings known as recorders, who go to the hydrographic school at Devonport. Many a recorder has started off by spending several months with other ratings on a remote island. Their job there is to set up and operate a radio station which enables surveyors on the parent ship to plot their position. Their great day is once a month when mail and supplies arrive. Some recorders are drafted to ships in home waters, like HMS Shackleton, which, after 25 years' work, pays her last respects to her sister ship, Scott, before going to the breaker's yard. Early most mornings, the naval surveyors in Scott are at work in the chart room. A chart is a nautical map of the shape of the seabed, for there are mountains and valleys under the sea as well as on land. To measure the varying depths of the ocean, small boats, equipped with echo sounding machines, go out from Scott. Since 1928, the echo sounder has been used to draw a complete picture of the seabed. The echoes are bounced back from the bottom of the sea and the time they take is translated into depths and recorded. The sounding boat usually puts to sea for a 10 hour stretch and the crew prepare their own meals and hot drinks in the boat's tiny galley. There's plenty of food needed too in a 1,200-ton ship with nearly 100 men aboard. Scott, mainly based in home waters, often stays at sea for two or three weeks. Much of the work is done on the bridge. Though surveying is now in the electronic age, the traditional methods with sextants and station pointers are still used to relate the position of the ship to visible objects on shore. On the bridge, too, is an echo-sounding cubicle. 
very different from the days of swinging the lead, which was the original method of measuring the depth of water beneath the ship. Today, the echo sounder does the job, while in the radar room, the screens give a complete picture of any land or visible obstructions. Away from land, the surveyor has to anchor his own visible marks. These are buoys fitted with reflectors, which can be seen on the radar screen. And to show the ship is at work and can't be manoeuvred, up go the signals. How do you measure the distance between two marker buoys? Piano wire is the answer, because it's light and strong. It's run out from the ship along the seabed. Often on her North Sea surveys, Scott runs into bad weather. Sometimes it's bad enough to hold up her survey work. But the crew are not idle even then. Upkeep of the equipment is all done aboard, and rough weather means that survey poles need plenty of repainting. Of course, even surveyors need to relax. What do they dream about? Hidden depths, obviously. But the chart room is still awake. After supper, the crew of the sounding boat are busy recording all the depths taken during the day. Later, they'll be sent back to the hydrographic department in London so that revised charts can be made of the area. Today, the amateur yachtsman too is catered for by Britain's chart makers. Specially designed for the use of yachtsmen around Britain's shores, this is the first chart of a series. Against the white cliffs of Dover, you can sometimes see the less familiar sight of the inshore survey squadron. Three small vessels, Echo, Egeria and Enterprise, doing their own particular job. Wrecks on the Goodwin Sands are hazards that have to be charted in an area frequently being surveyed because of the constantly shifting sands. To find the depth of water over submerged wrecks, a thin wire sweep is rigged between two craft. The Royal Navy's surveying service has come a long way since the days of the first chart makers. Charts were then printed privately, but in 1795, when shipping losses in uncharted seas were tremendous, the Admiralty took over and set up a hydrographic office to provide charts for the Navy. Today, more than two million Admiralty charts are issued each year and used by mariners all over the world. And modern chart making even means working on land. Here, the Navy puts up a portable radio station by the Firth of Forth. To land lovers, charts are a mystery. To the men of the survey fleet, they're a full-time job. But to all who go down to the sea in ships, they're a guarantee of safe arrival. <laughs>